Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and welcome to another episode of Cheap Shots. This is our series that is dedicated to showing you how to save money on the miniatures wargaming hobby. And on this episode, episode number 57, we're going to show you guys how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up Thundrix Profiteers of Warhammer Underworlds. So, assuming that you are purchasing everything for the very first time for our cheapskate method, we're talking about a grand total investment of $20.88 in order to paint up your Thunderx Profiteers to look like this. As you can see on this photo, these guys have a beautiful tabletop standard and they're ready to fight out in your games of Warhammer Underworld or whatever else you want to use them for. Now, comparatively, if you were to buy things from the Citadel as well as Army Painter to paint up your miniatures look like this, using the exact same techniques that we use, you're going to be end up saving about $112.62 in difference between the Cheapskate method as well as the Citadel and Army Painter method. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this video started and show you guys how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up Thundrix Profiteers. So the very first thing you'll need to do, of course, is to prime your miniatures. In this case, as you can see in this photo, I decided to use Flat White Primer by Rustoleum. I can buy a can of that stuff at my local Walmart for $3.99. Now, priming actually does two different things for your miniatures. The very first thing that it does is that, first of all, it creates an uneven rough surface for your acrylic paints in order to adhere to. Um, if you were just to apply your acrylic paints directly to the blare plastic, uh, it would actually have a really bad finish because any form of friction whatsoever would cause the paint to just rub off directly on the miniature. The flat white primer acts as an adhesive for the acrylic paint to stick to, so that way you have a good tabletop finish on your miniature. Now another reason why we're painting these miniatures up in flat white primer is because we're using what is called a quick paint method in order to paint your miniatures. In a quick paint method, you basically just uh, base coat the colors for your miniature as well as dry brush them with a pastel version of that color to create some three-dimensionality in the miniature. And then you do an all over oil wash in order to mute down colors uh, to smooth out those transitions between your base coating and your dry brushing. And at the same time, let the oil recesses go into the recesses of the miniature to make, the, uh, to make those details really pop. So because that white primer is very, very important because the oil washing process really mutes down your colors. So the white primer helps with the vibrancy of the colors that you use on these miniatures. So that way when you add the oil wash, it's not that darkened down. So once you have your miniature primed, the next thing you do now, of course, is to work on your very first base coat. Traditionally, whenever you paint miniatures, it's always best to paint miniatures as if you were dressing that individual. All right, so the very first thing you would start with are the flesh, and then you work out from layers from there. Now, luckily for us, in Thundrix Profiteers and with Caradron Overlords in general, a uh, majority of them actually have no flesh being exposed. They wear these kind of like these diving suits that kind of remind me of Big Daddies from uh, the Bioshock series of games. So because of that, we really don't need to worry about flesh too much. So what we need to do first is go ahead and paint up the body armor, the uh, environmental suit that these guys use. In this case, I decided to use Magenta by Americana Deco Art. It costs you about 50 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. It's a nice dark magenta color and it acts as a very good base coat to work off of. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to pick out all the details and all the bio suits that these guys are wearing, which is actually quite extensive for these miniatures. So just pick that out in two thin layers of Makana Magenta, and then from there you're ready to move on. So now that we're done base coating the miniatures and their suits in magenta, the next thing we need to do now, of course, is a quick dry brush. In this case, we're using Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs at 50 cent at your local Walmart, and we're just doing a quick dry brushing real quick. Now, when it comes to dry brushing, it's always best to dry brush your miniatures lightly and gradually add more layers of brightness to your miniature with additional layers of dry brushing. And the reason why that is the case is because you want to slowly bring up, build up the brightness to your miniature. What dry brushing does is that it catches the pigments on the raised surface of your miniature. So things like folds, increases in the fabric, textures, that sort of thing. So that bright color on the highlights of the miniature while the darker base coat is still left in the recesses. This creates this kind of three-dimensionality to your miniature and creates this illusion of depth in your miniature as well. So as you can see in this photo, I just did a quick dry brushing real quick with my Cameo Pink and ready to move on. So the next step, of course, is another base coat. Now, traditionally, when I paint up miniatures, I usually save the metallic colors for last, is what I typically do uh, for my miniatures. But in this case, um, we're doing primarily metallic colors for this paint job, and the reason why is because for Caradron Overlords, especially Thundrix Profiteers, there is a lot of metal on these guys. Um, they actually have this very cool steampunk kind of aesthetic going on with them. So because of that, uh, that's the next color you work on your metallics. In this case, 
Um, what I just did is I just painted every single metallic piece on this miniature in gunmetal gray by Folk Art. You can find this stuff at your local Hobby Lobby. It costs you about 75 cents for that. And as you can see in this photo, I just don't put two layers of this uh, gunmetal gray on every single metallic piece on these miniatures. And the reason why that is the case is because um, there's different levels of silver being used with all the gear that they carry, their weapons, their helmets, their boots, their backpacks. There's all kinds of different metallic elements on it. So by painting all of it silver, first of all, all we need to do from there, of course, is just pick up the little individual details and different color metallic paints to kind of create this kind of nice uh, overall finish when it's all said and done. So as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of metallic paint on these guys. In fact, it's the primary color that's actually on these uh, miniatures. Now, a, another way you could paint these miniatures very quickly is to spray paint all of them with silver paint. That is a method you could use and then just pick out the colors that are not in silver with different colors. The problem though is that because you have to put magenta in the recesses, it could really mess up your paint job because the metal paint could actually, you know, poke through the magenta in that case. So my suggestion is still to do the magenta color first and then to pick out your metal and, uh, and, all of, and paint all of it silver. And then from there you could pick out the individual pieces that you want to be uh, different colors. All right, so now that we're done with the uh, silver painting for all the metallic pieces in the miniatures, the next thing we need to do now is start working on the details. Now, we're actually going to show the back of these miniatures first because these miniatures actually have these quite extensive back rigs that they have. They look like respirators and oxygen tanks. And so for some of the design elements, things like coils, vents, uh, tubing, uh, the giant dirigible looking thing on the back of the guy that's flying. I picked those out in two thin layers of Nita's acrylic antique copper. You can find this color at your local Hobby Lobby. It costs you about 65 cents. So all the details I wanted to have in this kind of like bright copper color, I just put in two thin layers on the back here in order to achieve that effect. At the same time, I also apply this copper color to the dirigible that's attached to the back of the guy that's flying around, as well as any copper colors like in the framing of the guns and some of the tubing and stuff like that that's on these miniatures. Now, once you're done with that, the next thing I do now is to pick out your gold elements. In this case, I use Folk Arts Pure Gold, runs you about 75 cent at your local uh, Hobby Lobby. And for different accent pieces on these miniatures from the metallics, I picked out those details in gold. So for example, the body of the weapons on some of the guns that these guys are carrying, the hilts of the swords, the mechanic me mechanisms on their guns. I also picked out some of their respirator filters and gas and the masks and visors of their helmets in gold as well. Uh, same thing with the detailing on the beard as well as in some of the uh, beakers and steam tubes and steam globes that are on the back of uh, Thunderick himself. So whatever details that you want to be picked out in gold, just put two thin layers of pure gold as well. And as you can see, there's still a lot of silver left on these miniatures, so that's the reason why I painted all the metal silver first, and there's work off that base layer by adding different details and different metallic colors. The next metallic color I then used was Copper by Folk Art. You can find this stuff at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. And once again, we're just adding additional details to these miniatures, picking out different elements in copper. So for example, some of the things like some tubing, dials, uh, different gas tanks that are looking on the backpacks, especially on Thunderick himself, the uh, Aether Engineer that's looking at there on the back right. I picked out a lot of those details. I picked out some respirators, some dials on uh, the two of the gunners on the left-hand side. Now for the guy on the right-hand side, the guy with that huge cannon looking thing, I actually painted up his chest, his breastplate, which is consists of his shoulder, the back, and the chest of his armor. I picked that out in copper paint as well to add some variety uh, to this little warband. And as you can see, with all the variety of metallic paints all kind of interacting with each other, this army and this unit is coming along very, very quickly. And like I said before, and the reason why is because for most Karadron overlords, the most color common colors you're using is primarily metallic for these guys. All right, so now that we have all the copper, all of the, uh, the, the bronze, as well as the uh, silver pieces and gold pieces all finally painted out, the last thing we're doing now is we're gonna do an all over dry brush over all the metallic elements on our miniatures using Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. Anniversary Silver is actually a very bright silver paint and it costs you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And the reason why we're doing a dry brushing with this silver Anniversary Silver over all the metallic colors is because that way it creates this vibrancy and this kind of shining gold element to it. So so for example, all your copper pieces and gold pieces will have like kind of like this shine coming from it that the anniversary silver will bring. Same thing with the actual gunmetal gray. It actually kind of makes it have like this polished look for it as well. Like I said, these Karadron overlords, especially Thunderous Profiteers, uh, they have this very steampunk inspired design aesthetic for these guys. And so you can see there, it just looks really absolutely fantastic with that extra level of vibrancy done for the metallic paints. 
So now that we're done with all the metallic colors on our miniatures, the next thing we need to do now is to focus on all the detail aspects for these miniatures. In which case we're focusing primarily on the leather goods for these guys. So as you can see in this photo, I decided to use pavement. It is a color that's made by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs about 50 cents at your local Walmart. And I use this primarily for the leather goods. So things like the straps on Thondrick's uh, huge uh, chemical laboratory on his backpack. I picked that out in two thin layers of pavement as well. Same thing with the leather straps on the guy that's kind of floating around up on that giant dirigible thing. And primarily, I focus primarily on the boots for the most part, putting two thin layers of pavement paint upon the boots as well for the leather. So once you get done addressing the leather goods, we're ready to move on to our next detail. And that detail is another dry brush. Uh, once again, I use Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. So for all the parts that I picked out in black leather, I do a quick, real quick dry brush with Pale Gray to add some three-dimensionality. The Pale Gray catches the raised surfaces and the creases of the boots, while at the same time leaving that pavement color directly into the darker recesses. So once you're done with the uh, black leather goods, you can move on to the brown leather goods. All right, so now that we're done with the black leather goods, the next thing we need to work on is the brown leather goods. So for example, things like the gloves. A lot of these guys have gloves that they're wearing on their biohazard suits. So for the gloves, I picked that out in two thin layers of taupe gray. It is a color that's made by Anita's acrylic. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. I put two thin layers of this uh, taupe gray on all the gloves. So things like if you look at the Drax skewer, the guy's carrying the, the sky spear thing. I picked out his gloves, same thing with Thundrick. Basically every single member of this group, I picked out those gloves out in two thin layers of that um, taupe gray is what I did for that. Now for the other parts of this miniature as well, for any brown leather goods that we have as well, I also picked those out in two thin layers of territorial beige. And for that color, I primarily use that on the dirigible rig that that uh, carrot floating character has. He's actually got a couple of straps connected to that dirigible. I picked out those details in two thin layers of territorial beige. So the very last step, of course, is to pick out some of the finer details on these miniatures, in which case we primarily focused on things like gemstones, as well as the cabling on some of these characters. Now, as you notice here, a lot of these fighters have like these little lenses on their helmets. So what I decided to do is I managed to pick out all those lenses using a, just a little dot of Anita's acrylic uh, true red paint. So that way you can see like their normal eyes, they have like this kind of like red glowing effect going on in their masks. At the same time, every single one of these helmets have kind of like this telescopic lens looking like thing on the other eye. So for that, I picked those out in Tahitian Blue by uh, Delta Serum Coat, and that cost you 65 cents to a local Hobby Lobby as well. I also use that Tahitian Blue to pick out other gemstones throughout their weapons, on the dials of their guns, on some of the tubing coming off their backpacks. I use this color quite a bit for Thundrick himself with that weird kind of chemical flamethrower thing that he's carrying, and I picked those out in two thin layers of this Tahitian Blue, as well as two thin layers of the uh, True Red. As you can see, that really brings out a lot of those design elements. Now the next step that we decided to do is now that we're done with the miniatures themselves, the next thing we're going to work on is their bases. In this case, uh, these guys, especially for Thunder's Profiteers, these guys will be used as a squat bounty hunter gang of Venators for our Necromunda Anarchy Road campaign. So because of that, we wanted the bases to look like this kind of ashen, dirty, chemically contaminated, burnt earth type of look. So because I decided to paint up the bases first, so that way when I do my overall oil wash, the oil wash could be used for the bases as well. So in this case, I painted all the texturing on the bases with two thin layers of gray by Anita's acrylic. Now if you'll notice, after I get done with two levels of it, there's still some white undercoat still showing through it. Now technically speaking, if you want to just have a pure gray finish, uh, you could add a third or a fourth coat in order to uh, block that out. But for me though, it wasn't such a big issue because the ash waste of Necromunda are kind of like this molted, burned, well, ash gray look. So if the white undercoat comes to the gray, it's just only going to add to the overall effect. So I just put two thin layers of the gray on it, let it dry, and then I move on for my dry brush. And finally, the very last step that I do, of course, is a dry brush. I use Pale Gray by Full Cart and just do a once over real quick on all the texturing on the bases. So that way you have that good three dimensionality look. You got the raised surfaces and the highlights being dry brush and pale gray with that darker gray still stuck in the recesses. So now that we're done with that, the next step to do, of course, is an oil wash. So the product we use for our oil wash is Midwax Poly Shades uh, Mission Oak uh, Stain. And the nice thing about this is that actually it's a nice dark color that kind of blends your colors together. And what it does is it basically mutes down the bright colors that we used. At the same time, the polish shade seeps into the recess of the miniature, bringing out a lot of the details that we couldn't see before. You could really see this in the base work. As you can see, you can see the individual design elements of the bases when that oil wash went into the bases as well. And same thing with like the spaces between the beards, the texturing of the metallics, the creases 
pieces of their gloves between their fingers. It just does a really awesome job of doing that. At the same time, it also smooths over the transitions between our base coats as well as our dry brushes. If you guys remember before when we showed you photos of the dry brushing, you can kind of see like the, saw this pastel-y kind of chalky finish to them. And by adding that poly shade oil wash, it kind of smooths out those transitions as well. And at the same time, as you can see earlier, the very bright colors that we used before, the vibrancy of those colors have been muted down as well. And it looks really, really nice. Now, once you're done with the oil wash, what you'll need to do is let this stuff sit and dry and cure for about 24 hours. My suggestion to you is to make this the very last step of your painting session. That way, when you go back to your painting session again, it'll be fully dried and cured at that point. And the reason why is because not only is this stuff a stain, it's also a polyurethane. So you, when it dries, it's going to have a nice hard exterior that's going to protect the coating of your guys' paint. Now, the only problem with that, of course, is that when you're done, it's going to have this kind of candy coated sheen to it. If you like that clear gloss candy coated look, you can leave it alone but if you're like me it kind of drives me off i spray with some matte varnish by krylon cost me about five bucks at my local walmart in order to mute those colors down you could of course skip this step if you want to it's largely up to you so here's the picture of Thunder's Profiteers. I decided to spray with the matte varnish, like I said earlier, using Krylon uh, matte spray in order to uh, flatten down that sheen so that way you can really see the details on the miniatures. And the last thing we do, of course, is to put a base coat of two thin layers of Skyline along the rims of the bases so that way they could be used in our games of Necromunda. Like I said before, this is being used as a Vanator uh, bounty hunting gang of squats. But if you want to use this for Warhammer Underworlds, the same color could still be used for that and still look really, really amazing. And as you can see, we are now fully done with these miniatures. And there you have you guys. This is what the end result would look like for Thundrix Profiteers for Warhammer Underworlds. And as you can see here, this is what we use exactly for our Chiefscape method. And the Chiefscape method only costs us $20.88. And that's assuming you're buying everything for the very first time when you paint this way. So now that we're done discussing about the Cheapskate method, what we're going to do now is talk about exactly what materials you need to buy from both Citadel and Army Painter to paint up your squad of Thunder's Profiteers exactly the same way we did and show you the price difference between their products versus the cheap ones that we use for our Cheapskate method. Let's go ahead and get that going. So for our shopping list for both Citadel as well as Army Painter products, we're assuming, of course, that you're buying all these products for the very first time. So first of all, to do your priming, you'll need to buy a can of Corox White Spray. It runs you $17 for that. You'll then need to paint up the biohazard suits that these characters are wearing. So you'll need to buy a pot of Pink Horror, which runs you $4.55. And then you'll need to dry brush that uh, Pink Horror with Fulgrim Pink, which costs you an additional $4.55 for that pot. After that, you'll need to paint all the metallic paints in Lead Belcher, which costs you $7.80. And then from there, for all the parts that could be brass or um, bra a copper color, you'll need to buy a pot of Brass Scorpion. For all the gold elements, you'll need to buy Retributor Armor. And for all the bright copper pieces, you'll need to buy Screaming Bell. All three of those cost $7.80 for those. Now, once you're done with your metallic paints, you'll need to dry brush your metallic paints using uh, Iron Breaker, which is $7.80 for that. From there, you'll need to move on to the black leather goods, in which case you'll need to buy a pot of uh, Eschen Gray in order to paint those black leather goods, and then dry brush them with a pot of Ultimon Gray, and both those products will cost you $4.55 for those. For the leather, brown leather goods, you'll need to buy a Rakarth Flesh for the gloves, that runs you $4.55 for those, and for the boots, for then the leather straps you want to paint brown, you'll need to buy a pot of Baylor Brown, which also runs you $4.55 for those. Now, for the fine details, for the uh, different gemstones and the Aether chemicals and the tubes running off these characters you'll need to buy a pot of Baharoth blue which runs you $4.55 for that color and then for the individual eye sockets that we marked on red you'll need to buy a pot of Mephiston red which runs you $4.55 for that and then lastly of course you'll need to paint the bases you'll need to buy a pot of Slanesh gray in order to uh, paint as well as dry brush the bases you'll then need to buy a can of army painter strong tone for your oil wash which runs you $32 for that and then finally you need to rim your bases in rust gray which runs you $4.55 sense for that product so like i said before assuming that you're buying all these citadel and army painter products for the very first time you're talking about a grand total investment of 133 dollars and 50 cents in order to paint up your war band of courage on overlords with the same techniques and standard that we used now when you take that 133 dollars and 50 cents and you compare it to my cheapskate method which only costs you 20 dollars and 88 cents you're talking about a grand total savings of 112 dollars and 62 cents in all told pretty much you're almost saving six times as much uh, by using our cheapskate method instead of buying all the army painter stuff so there you guys have it this is how you guys can quickly as well as cheaply paint up uh, thunderx profiteers for warhammer underworlds as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is invaluable to us as always 
Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.